which kind of effect did you learn at some point and didn't really expect you to use, just to come around and use it every now and then? I think for me, for example, that would be CC Bandit. Maybe I should do another video about that one as well. Well, said and done. What is up guys, it's Arnik and welcome to this week's video. Especially when working on animated explainer videos, you will find yourself to add more style and interest to your animations. And one way to do that is by implementing animation principles. Now, I know I already mentioned oftentimes that I want to make a dedicated video about it. And I still do. And yet, this is not it. <laughs> but CC Bennett is a great way to add overshoot to certain animation types. So, without any further ado, Let's get started. Oh, the intro. Let's say you want something to slide into frame. But if we're being honest here, this looks super boring and not realistic at all. I mean, would plants behave like this in real life? Hell no. So let's add some secondary action to the leaves. Our primary action is the slide movement. And then we're gonna add some rotation to the leaves only. Before you do though, remember to change the anchor point position to the bottom end. Otherwise the leaves will rotate around the center or wherever the anchor point is, which we obviously do not want to happen. There are plenty of ways to set a new anchor point. One way is to call up the anchor point property by hitting A on your keyboard. But if you change these values, you will move the object at the same time and then you need to reposition it. While this method does have its perks, it is not optimal for our case right now. A far better way, in my opinion, is to hit the keyboard shortcut Y, which activates the pen behind or anchor point tool. Now simply move your cursor to the current anchor point position. Click and hold it and drag the anchor point to wherever you want to place it. While dragging, you can also hold on Ctrl or Command to make the markers snap to set spots. Another way is to use plugins like for example the Motion Tools from Motion Design School, which I can highly recommend. But there are plenty of other plugins like this one out there as well. With the layer selected, you can just click anywhere on the grid elements to snap the anchor point to the corresponding position. The best thing is that position keyframes are automatically updated to the new anchor point, as you can see with a pot for example. With the anchor point stuck to the bottom of each plant leaf, let's finally add rotation. By having the leaves rotate a little further at the end of the movement, we are adding an animation principle called overshoot. In reality, non-static elements like for example the plant leaves will try to keep the momentum they have built up. When their initial movement stops, they will overshoot their final position and swing back and forth until the kinetic energy is used up and they come to rest again. Having the anchor point attached to the bottom is important here, because that is the only fixed connection they have. Place the time cursor somewhere close to where the pot is about to stop moving and add a first keyframe, which should be directed to the opposite side of the movement. So hit R on your keyboard to bring up the rotation property and rotate the leaf over by just a bit, something like 5 to 12 degrees usually does the trick. Next, move down the timeline a few frames and place another keyframe with slightly lower value into the other direction. Then all that is left to do is to repeat the same process a couple of times until the rotation comes to hold. Now let's replay and see if it looks realistic enough or if we need to adjust a few of the values. Obviously the movement is way too harsh, so highlight all the keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. If you do not want to place all those keyframes individually by yourself, you again can use the Motion Tools plugin to make the keyframes behave elastically. You are able to adjust their behavior fairly precisely. However, I would always recommend working the keyframes by hand if you're still new to things like keyframe timing and easing. That way you will get a better feeling for it. That actually goes for most of the automations that plugins can do for you. It's only when you put in the time and effort that you really learn how things work and function. Now that is fine and all, but we can make the waving even a little more realistic. And this is where CC Bandit comes in. Highlight the designated layer and search for the effect CC Bandit. 
After applying, you first have to properly set the start and end point. You can do so using the crosshairs next to the corresponding value. Click it and then click into the frame wherever you want the spot to be. While the start point should be positioned somewhere close to the bottom of your leaf, the end point needs to be somewhere above the upper end of the shape layer. The only problem with the start and end point positioning is that they behave separately from the layer's movement. As the leaf slides in with the pot, it is going to vanish in the first few frames. Unfortunately, you have to keyframe the start and end point of the effect according to, in this case, the parented part, including easing and everything. With that said, go back to the first rotation keyframe and add one for band. Simply add one parallel to every rotation keyframe and make them descend to zero as well. And don't forget to easy ease them for better smoothness. And then play it back. Now that is even better, right? Finally, here's one last tip for you. Highlight all banded keyframes and move them over just by a couple of frames. This method is what you call overlapping and adds yet a little more realism to the plant's waving movement. In the end, do the same thing for every other leaf and enjoy your little planty waving back at you. Well, and there you have it. And that's it for this video. Nothing more to add here. Other than, you know, like, subscribe, bell ringing. Yeah, see you next one. Cheers.